Right, the script changed for Michigan as they struggled to tie Illinois, but the results are still rosy. We'll sort it all out and see the highlights. We'll also scout the Buckeyes in what shapes up to be a dandy. All that and more coming up next. Everybody, welcome to Michigan Replay. The score between Michigan and Illinois on Saturday was 22 to 22 tie game and bittersweet emotions really today on Michigan Replay. We have the roses here because the tie ensures Michigan of a Rose Bowl berth in Pasadena on January 1. It also guarantees a Big Ten championship undisputed and yet the tie is disappointing. Yes, Jim, there's no question about that and first of all, once you understand our ultimate objective in this program is to get the Rose Bowl and Let's say any way that we can, but uh, we're not happy with yesterday's tie. Uh, we are fortunate that we tied the game in the way that we did. In many respects, we played some very good football. I think people don't realize the fact of the matter is with two minutes to go, you were down. You were in danger of losing that ball game, put together a great drive to come back to tie it and make the Rose Bowl an undisputed Big Ten championship happen. I think sometimes after looking at that game, you forget that. You miss the fact that in the last two minutes, this team stood tall and got the job done in a tough situation. I think you're exactly right, and I think that's a credit to our seniors because Elvis really took over. Uh, we had some fine catches, and the offensive line, which is predominantly made up of our senior groups who wanted to play their greatest game, really give him the time to throw the football. <clears throat> and the thing we got to understand is, you know, no one wants to fumble the football, and we had 10 fumbles. And sometimes when you overcome those things, and we must correct them, and we will never accept those. But yet, and, and there's many respects, a lot of things we've done with a very banged-up defense that I'm proud of our football team, and yet I know we have to get better, and we're going to do that next week. Got to do that next week, because next week is Ohio State. But don't go away first. We'll be back, take a look at the first half highlights of Michigan versus Illinois. But first, we hear from Jesse Johnson, the hero in Saturday's game, about all those footballs left on the ground. I guess the ball was kind of slippery, and everybody, you know, kept letting it loose. And coach, you know, from the get-go was telling us, and we had to keep the ball, you know, ball protection. I guess nobody took it seriously, and the ball kept coming loose. We, we found the ball at least three times now near the end zone or turn the ball over, uh, you know, during the first half through a couple of interceptions. And, you know, there's no way we, we can win with, with that many, you know, fumbles. I mean, we got a couple of them back, but, you know, the ball, just the fact that the ball being on the ground, is, is just, um, you know, we can't have that. A disappointed Derek Alexander, but one thing was clear in the football game against Illinois, Coach Muller. Offensively, your game plan early was great. You could move the ball almost at will. Right. The game plan was one thing, Jim, and then the execution. And, uh, you know, you wonder why things happen sometimes. You just got to go back and work harder at them. But uh, I feel there wasn't one young man out there that wasn't trying to try or win for Michigan. Talk about a young man. One trying to, this is a right. great performance right here by our Tyrone Wheatley. Unbelievable. And, and really, I felt Wheatley, in many respects, probably ran Jim as well as he's run all day. And we had a little trouble hanging on to the football. And I think that's something, obviously, that we can correct. That was in your first possession, put you up 7 to nothing. And defensively, you had Illinois right, all we, figured we out. We come back with a fumble and give them great field position. Our defense came in and, and really played well at the beginning. And Henderson gets the big sack there. Then we come back, and Wheatley goes up the middle and uh, another big run. And we come back, and then we hit uh, Derek Alexander on a second 11 over the middle for a big gain, I think around 30 yards. Elvis really threw the ball well today. And, and mainly, Jim, a lot of it had to do with the offensive line. Our pass protection was good today. Then we come back and we fake here. We roll out. We hit Tony McGee. And right here is one of those problems. We laid the ball down when we fumble. And, and it's at a point on the field where you're going in. Right. You at Eight. least get three out of that. We fumbled on a 17, 19, and in their end zone. And so we had a lot of opportunities. Here our defense comes back, responds again. Produsco dumps one off out there in the flat. They fumbled the ball, and for their sake, they recovered. Come back again, and you're moving the ball so well. Right. We had a good. We had a good day. Well, you we get 523 yards, 306 yards, Jim, in the first half, and only score seven points. There's where you start to worry. Here we go. We're down for a first down inside their five-yard line. Fumble the ball again, and they come up with it in the end zone. 
Now, they start moving the ball on you. Did they do anything different? But go back to your offense again. I mean, your offense was on the field all day. Right. And Here, here's a big play that doesn't happen. Right. Derek just ran right behind and I, I missed focus or lost concentration on the football there, but had an easy, what would be a, a probably a touchdown. But we come back from that. We hit a Monty Toomer over the middle, and there goes the ball. And again, we're down to the 17-yard line, ready to score again, and they get out of it. Now, they start moving the ball on you. Talk to me about anything they did offensively. Well, I think one thing, we didn't control the ball like we should have. And, and be honest with you, Jim, we are really beat up defensively. And uh, Martin Davis, we lost him in the second quarter here, and that was a big problem. And they made some plays. Verduzco's a good quarterback, and, and they had a good game plan and make some, made some plays in there. But it was a point where our offense had to score and put them in a different game plan, really. They hit the tight end, and he gets the first down there. And this is Illinois starting to move the ball. Now, you do a good job defensively here on the goal line. Right. Here we have a good play by uh, Stanley in there, Buster Stanley. And then uh, Shante Peoples come up with the big hit and made them settle for a field goal. Forced them into a field goal at that point, even though you've already got tons of yardage on them. It's still just a 7-3 to three football game. Come back on offense and move the ball again. Right, we're moving the ball well here. Wheatley gets out for a good size gain here, we're, uh, running very well. We come back and we try to uh, uh, split end screen here. And really, we blocked the guy right into the play. And a lineman picked this ball off. And it's a guy that I think, after reviewing the film, Elvis really didn't see. They run it back and they get in field position. And rather than scoring three points or possibly a touchdown, we give them an opportunity to tie us, or excuse me, come up to, with another field goal to make it 7-6 to six at halftime. At 7-6 uh, at halftime with the kinds of things you did, you had to be concerned with the turnover, but you knew you couldn't continue that. Eight times you left it on the ground in the first half. You, you didn't expect it to continue, but in some ways it did. And, and Jim, uh, you always worry about those scoring opportunities when you get them and they slip away for you. Whatever reason, you know, that's going to come back to haunt you, and obviously it did in this game. But I, I think some of the character showed through at the end, but obviously not the way we wanted to stand up. We'll take a look at some of that character as we go to the second half highlights in the next segment. But first we hear from Elvis Gerback, who saw something he hadn't seen in a long time at Michigan Stadium on Saturday. I've never been in a game like that where uh, you go up and down a field and then you start fumbling and dropping a ball in the red zone. And that's a situation where you can score a lot of points. And, uh, you know, I just felt that I mean, we could have been up at least 21 to nothing, like in the first quarter, but uh, just turned the ball over too many times. You know, everything was there, everything was working, it's just holding on to the ball. What did happen in half? Well, it was keeping hold of the football, Jim, and we were disappointed in that, and we addressed that issue, but it's something that sometimes you focus on too much and it continues to happen, and uh, we wanted to get the confidence back a little bit because you can feel sorry for yourself, you can get down on yourself to the point that you won't perform. Big and key that's in the, what we didn't right, want Right, big key that. in the third quarter early, you get a turnover, which puts you in position. Right, here, here they throw the ball through a would-be receiver right there. Shante Peoples comes up with a great interception there and gives us an opportunity to go down and get some points. Now you start moving the football. Right, here Walter Smith, Elvis hits Walter Smith over the middle and makes a good run here and gets us a, a, a first down, which was crucial. And then Jesse on, I think it was a third and two, he comes in here and has a good run right up the middle, scoring the touchdown. Now you missed the extra point, puts you up 13-6 in the third quarter. But things look like they're going your way, and then all of a sudden, Illinois starts to move the ball a bit. Right, they come back, and they started running the ball here a little bit, Jim, which is not characteristic of our defense. And again, maybe they were out there a little too long, but even the people who have to go in there, they have to, you know, they have to perform. Right here, they hit us over the middle on a, a square-end pattern for about 15, and then Verduzco rolls out again on a uh, kind of a bootleg type pass, takes it down to the five. And they were getting people open, third and Here's goal. a key down. They run a draw on third and eight with the idea if they don't make it, they're going to kick a field goal. And, and we missed an assignment there interiorly there, which give them the opportunity to score a touchdown. They miss their extra point, which makes it 13-12. Then another turnover, and this was Walter Smith off his hands, and they make the interception on you. Right. There we had an opportunity to get a first down, which we didn't do, and, and give them field position. Now they come back and running the ball. Again, Jim, no matter what's said in football, don't allow them to run the football. They come back, kick a field goal, and that gives them the lead 
15-13 at that point. And I think the interesting thing is, is the kids, your kids respond. Here, fourth and one, you go for it, and Bernie Legat does the job. Comes up with a strong one here, Jim. And every time, and Jim, we only punted one time after two major penalties forced us to punt, and we came back, and then Elvis throwing very well again to Derek over the middle for another big game, getting us down in good field position. And Jesse comes off the left side here, breaks a couple tackles, cuts back, and plays out and ends up in the end zone. That gives you the 19-15 lead, and that's in the fourth quarter. Uh, not a whole lot of time left, but enough for Illinois to move. And then they moved the football on you, and this had to be very disappointing. Right, that come with seven minutes to go. We went ahead, and then they just brought the ball right back. And, uh, you know, you can't get tired. I don't care. Mentally, you had to pick it up here. And again, here's running the football. It just shouldn't happen, and we're missing way too many tackles there. They go to the option out of the full house. Verdusco gets in, and that puts you down at that point, 22-19, with uh, just about two minutes to play. Right, and I will say one thing. If there's anything that happened in this game of a positive nature, it's right here. Elvis was a fired-up young person today, which I was very, very proud of. And just as importantly, those guys, those unsung heroes up front, give him the time to throw the ball. Derek comes up with a great uh, catch there and gives us an opportunity to move the ball down. Jesse gets out here for a run of close to 20 yards, giving us more great field position. Now, Jim, you look at it and what are you to do? You know one thing, our ultimate goal is to go to the Rose Bowl. We tried a couple plays in there, didn't work, and Pete really drilled one, and I was very proud of him because he's received a lot of criticism. He hasn't always kicked like he would like to, and as you mentioned, he missed an extra point, but really, that was a snap and a hole more than it was his. But he put that one right in the middle. Couple of questions from the Monday morning quarterbacks that, uh, you know, hang around the parking lots. Uh, any thoughts of going for the touchdown late, going for the win instead of the tie? Oh, I was still trying to go for the win, but I, I took a little more of a conservative approach. Sometimes you have to make decisions. I had talked to myself, basically, which sounds crazy, but on Friday night. And I knew that if we ever got in a position in that game and we had the opportunity to tie, we could lock up the opportunity to go to the Rose Bowl, which we want to do. So that was very, very important. But we were still going to run some good plays there in order to preserve that Rose Bowl victory, hopefully. And, and fortunately, that we kicked the field goal through there. A lot of questions about a two-point conversion that you tried that failed. Uh, people, you know, at the time, it was a good idea. But as it turns out later in the game, if it was... You kick it, you win by one. But I don't think you can make that argument because you got to play the game at the time you play it. Right. Here's the scenario, Jim. You're up. There's seven minutes to go in the game. So maybe the time factor I didn't figure correctly. But you go and you're up by four, you're up by five. It doesn't make any difference. If you get up to by six, now two field goals will only tie you. They had seven minutes, remember. They, they kick a field goal, they can come back and kick another field goal as a problem. We make out a chart, clear back in the summertime, that tells us what to do because in the heat of battle sometimes, those things get all confused and you want to make sure so you take time. And on our chart it says if you're up by four, you're up by five, you go for two. We followed that. It didn't work out in this particular case, but still it was a well thought out decision. Maybe it wasn't a good decision as, as the game ends, but that's my decision. I made that decision in complete confidence through my coaching staff and myself, and uh, I wanted to win the game too. And a lot of those kids that fumbled that football wanted to win this game too. And that's why we're going to be, we're going to be after it this week. We're going to be after it this week, and don't forget the fact that Michigan tied is the reason we're playing with roses here on the desk today because they are going to the Rose Bowl. But we got Ohio State next week. Meantime, we want you all to know that you can follow this Michigan football team throughout this season. We're producing a videotape called Go Blue 92. We'll follow the Wolverines from the opener against Notre Dame all the way through the finisher against whoever in the Rose Bowl. We want you to know that we can take your order now by dialing 1-800-323-2536. Meantime, we'll be back and we'll talk about Ohio State. We'll also take a look in the locker room at the hero of today or of yesterday's game against Illinois, Peter Lezovic, and also talk about Coach Moeller talking about next week's game. My emotions are really mixed. I mean, I feel good. I feel great that, you know, I hit a field goal like that. It was, you know, I needed to hit something like that just for a confidence booster. And uh, it's important for the team, you know. Everything I can do is what, you know, I'm out there to do the job. And I'm glad, you know, I was able to do it today. We're going to be happy. We're going to Rose Bowl. Then next week, 
We play one of the biggest games ever. We play one of the biggest games ever. It's called Michigan, Ohio State. It's a lot of tough pride in getting after. That's what that game is all about. Tough pride in getting after. 